All right, this is what I have in my findings today. Being Saturday, it's almost in the summer, I guess it's the 19th of September. And I have my two Bedini wheels here. Both of them running off of one battery, but this one is being pulsed by the pulses that come out of the pulse side of the Bedini circuit here. It's going right to it, see that? The positive side. And it's pulsing both, I mean, it's pulsing this Bedini wheel through the one coil here. You can hear the pulses. Yeah, you can hear them. And these guys are pulsing at their own rate. Oops, I slipped off the wire there. That's not good. You hear the guy going, eh. that one. That's that one. There it is. There you go. You got, I got a big bolt on this thing and it's running it. And you can hear it pulse. So, kind of interesting. Now when I get this fast enough, Help it a little bit here. I get these lights, three LED lights going. I can change the colors if I move the ground wire to each of those other test points on there. It changes the colors. Kind of neat. It's got violet instead of blue. I got green. I went right over to the resistor that time. I got red and green. Kind of neat. Anyway, this is Grover the Rover. He's got. Uh, Video 1.2 gigahertz transmission. I mean, <coughs> it trans, uh, transmits at a video frequency of 1.2 gigahertz right here near the antenna. And uh, it's got a forward and reverse brush le uh, brushed motor speed controller. One battery for the video transmitter, one battery for the LED in the back, lights. And the lights come on when I plug this one in here. I see them flash there. See them flash. So I got a battery for the lights, a battery for the transmitter, and battery for the motor to run. I got a, a, a little uh, holder here for the pan and tilt on the uh, for the camera. But this is surface monitor right now. It's got a little beeper here for the low battery, for the motor battery, the main battery. Yeah, we're still we're still going here. Look at that. And the sun is charging. One panel up there is trying to keep this battery charged. So this is going about uh, 60 RPM. That's only going about half of it. I spin this guy faster. I don't know if it makes any difference. But the power out on this would be right here and is that going to nothing? I wonder if I put it to the battery, would that make a difference? That would be interesting. So I'm going to move Grover the Rover. Oh, i got nowhere to put him. Drop everything over here, all my supplies and my junk uh, parts. I can go junk diving for parts. Let's see if I put that positive one. Oops. One handed. Put this positive one. To the positive of here, 
wonder what that does. Is it pulsing still? Yeah, it's still pulsing. And it's supposed to be charging that battery some more. Then, are these guys still pulsing? Oops, I'm supposed to slip off. It slowed it down a lot. Matter of fact, it even almost stopped it. So I'm going to disconnect that. Let's see. Did I still hear pulses coming in here? Yeah. It's not from this wheel either. <laughs> Pulses are coming off of the, the power out on this wheel here. Isn't that kind of interesting? It'll probably get it going again. Probably only go at the rate this is pulses. So that's kind of interesting. This has a four high, the highest wind of the microwave oven transformer windings that I pulled off the transformer to run these. And I get about 17 to 20 volts at a good RPM on here. AC, it's about 17 to 20 AC. And these go up to a certain revolution, they kick in. So these five high side windings of a microwave oven transformer are running AC. These are running north and south. These are also running north and south magnets. And it's not even put on a bridge rectifier or any capacitance. It's just running free AC right here right now. So it's that's the AC side. These are pulse DC and it's pulsing that motor also. Battery is hooked up to the solar charger. One panel is about one watt, uh, 15 watt. And the way the sun is right now, it's probably not putting out that great. So it's trying to charge the battery. Pulse in the Bedini circuit. The motor is spinning here to get his RPM to run these five high side coils. And I'm getting a little light out of it here. Probably can hook up more of these in series. These are hooked up in uh, parallel, actually. These are parallel on here set up. So I can probably get more power out if I uh, I got the magnets close so it's kind of giving a little lens effect here. I'm slowing the wheel down. But look at it, it's pulsing that motor. Pulse DC going through the circuit around that wheel. Kind of interesting. Run that wheel. And me, look at me. I am trying to burn body fat. And as long as it's nice outside, I do my workouts here. Trying to get that fat down. And I'm sitting in the sun here. Do my workouts in the mirror here so you can see what I'm doing. But I got a long way to go. The cactus plant's going good. The marigolds like it over there. Now we get in the shade. Daylight time is savings time is shortening every day now. These uh, lemon balm are growing good. Basil's going to pot. Parsley's still growing here. I pulled a few of the beets out. They're uh, not too great. And this plant, <laughs> this tomato plant, still growing, but there's nothing coming out of it. No more tomatoes. I only got one this year. So here's what I have. This is my JVC uh, action cam, helmet cam. Oh, it's still pulsing the lights. How do you like that? So I must have picked up a little speed. But it is really pulsing both 
this circuit here create enough power to pulse that Bedini circuit to pulse the, the coil to run that wheel, the mag wheel. That looks like they're running about the same RPM, doesn't it? For each pulse, it must be in sync. Yeah, it's in synchronization right now. Now that is kind of neat. It's sinking on the pulses. These magnets are not next to butted up against the other, but these are. So it doesn't matter where this fires, it's going to hit a magnet. Whether it be <laughs> positive side or negative, north or south, I mean. Positive, negative, north and south, it's all the same to me. So I got another Bedini wheel started here. It's a big Ferris wheel one. And it's on the racer rim I had it on a while back. And it spins pretty freely. Oops, I gotta hold it. And it'll spin a long time. Gotta cut the ties on there and hitting the board. Oops, hitting everything here. Throwing the magnets off. They gotta be centered, see? I put a little band around the rim. So a green banding around there. It's real tough material. Keeps the flat part of the magnet square with the rim. So that's going to be another project. Right now I just want to get it out of the way. So, yeah. My project with the uh, this project here It's a Caponazzi Capogen circuit, and it works good. Except I blew it all out, blew out all the light bulbs because there's too much high of a pulse. When I run this, I go up to about when I max it out, I blow all the bulbs out, and I can change the pulse and the timing and the frequency as I add these microwave oven transformer capacitors in parallel. Here's the Capogen coil, but I don't seem to have it working right. That's the problem here. There's another one of my creations. It's a it's a push push 555 pulse width modulator. It pushes pushes at the same time, and the pulses go in and halfway in the coil, and they bounce back. And I got capacitors on each side, kind of set up the frequency. It should be like this, see. And I got to get back to that because I want that working too. Because the one inside my cabin really works good. I got it balanced out with the uh, push push. It's not push pull, it's push push. That's going to cover it for today, um, Saturday. I've got uh, one of my uh, quads are built up with carbon fiber, the multi we I call it the. He's over here, still charging. 11.9, hardly getting anywhere charging. But here he is. He's a quad Wii with a multi Wii Pro version 2 board on it. And I can't get this, it's one of those uh, nano 5 or 4,000, 5,000 milliamp battery. I can't get it charged past 11.9 volts. So I don't know what to do. It's been doing that for a long time. And here's my setup in here so far. I got. I tried to build a one of those push-pull FET drivers to get 60 AC hertz, and that failed. I'm going to go back to this SDR uh, looper with the tiny battery and coil, tiny cap and coil to get the LEDs to light. They run for about 10 20 minutes maximum. And then I tried to do a casher circuit and it failed. But this circuit did not fail here. This guy runs. <laughs> it's been running all night. This guy runs. 
with an LED lamp. My toroid round has got six wines on it, six separate ones. It's, it's pulsed with a, a FET transistor at a rate that I set with my 555 pulse width modulator. I got three settings on there for three different speeds, three different capacitors for the frequency. So, uh, yeah. This lamp runs like that too, but this lamp runs for a long, long time. I don't know what I did. I got some iron windings on there mixed with copper windings, mixed with stranded steel, uh, stranded copper windings. And that guy runs, when I tweak it out, it runs night and day on both of these little, uh, both of these little LED lamps. If I turn them both on, I could tweak it up and get them both on first. I better do this with two hands. And I tweak it up with a pot. That there runs a long, long time. I got a one of the wines go back to a uh, a uh, bridge rectifier on this side here, the bridge rectifier, and also some caps to send the system back to the battery. And it kind of keeps it from, it's kind of recuperative recuperation circuit. When I turn this lamp out, that lamp's dim too, so I don't get that. They're hooked up to diff two different coils, so this is my night light. I think that's going to wrap it up. This guy, he really works good. I've got six CFL bulbs on that thing, and it runs no, like a charm. But I don't know how much heat I'd get out on the heat sinks after running a while. That has to be proven yet. This cop gin works also. All I could do is flick this on, and there it goes. So I dial it. That high it goes lower so that must be the peak area right here the resonance the transformer and then this thing will get hot too I don't have the spark gap going just running straight so that guy still works good for the winter time this is an outdoor panel that keeps those LEDs that's a laser saber SJR looper circuit for lights it's nice this this lamp runs off of a outdoor. These are strip LEDs. They run off an outdoor panel of a solar panel. It's funny. I wonder if these will run it in right here. Hmm. I don't know. If I make this positive, which is this one, I make this one negative. Will that lamp come on? Oh, look at that. Real bright. Brighter than the other panel. I think that other panel is shot. Definitely shot. That other panel is shot. It don't even work that good anymore. Yeah. I think I burned it out. Anyway, I'm going to cut it off here. Off of me looking at my bod, trying to lose fat, burn the fat, burn the fat, feel better, <laughs> and that's all. I was going to cut it today. <laughs>